There are over 6,000 properties, nearly 10,000 residents. But how did it all start? Let's take a look back to the beginning of Leisure World. Inside Clubhouse One, off the main floor, is the Historical Society. It is this office that holds the keys to the past. Ross Cortese was a developer. His interest was in taking bare land and building housing developments and then selling them and then moving on to his next project. Cortese was a nationally known award-winning builder. After constructing the walled city of Rossmore, he had his focus on this area, which Leisure World was built upon. This land was just south of Rossmore, but it was already bordered. It was a community that was physically boundaried, and Cortese wanted to explore senior developments, so he thought this would be a really good place. Land purchase was the next action point for Cortese. So he um, bought it from the Hellmans, which are a very old family here that originally got the land through um, from the Spanish. They were ranchers, but they kept the mineral rights. So they still have the oil rights. If they ever found oil underneath Leisure World, the Hellmans have the mineral rights to it. Now with land ownership in place and building underway, sales began. With publicity from national magazines and inquiries from around the country, over 25,000 people viewed Leisure World in its first week. People actually came on site to buy the unit, so you could say that it, the sales office was open right away and they started selling units in October of 1961. Units in Mutual One, many of which were one bedroom, sold out within days. On June 8, 1962, the first residents moved in to Leisure World. The FHA would only allow Cortese to sell one Mutual at a time, so he sold Mutual One. It had to be 90% sold before they would give him the loan money to build Mutual Two. So you figure since all of them, I think they were all completed by 64 or 65, they were selling very quickly. Since we opened for sales at Rossmore Leisure World in Seal Beach, well over a half million people have paid us a visit. In 16 months of sales, we sold more than 6,000 apartments to buyers from 43 states. Although not the first senior community, the Rossmore Leisure World, as it was called, was the first complete senior community in the country with churches, medical facility, and adjacent shopping center. I believe the units went anywhere from $9,000 to $15,000. And then you were putting down your down payment, which was basically 10% and you had to start paying the monthly dues immediately upon buying them, even though you couldn't move in until the building was completed. And so people came in, they had to put down a decent down payment, and you had to go through a loan check because you were getting this unit with a mortgage. It wasn't cash outright like it is now, you were getting a mortgage to the FHA. It is uncertain when mortgages switch to cash buys only. Mutual 40-year mortgages were paid off in the early 2000s. When they were all paid off, then the FHA was no longer on site to monitor how our property was managed. But as long as there was debt in here owed to the FHA, we had a property management company called JL Moyer, and part of what they were doing was making sure the money for those mortgages was collected. However, those initial 1960s home purchases came with one key perk. You also got full health care coverage, and that was included in your monthly dues. So there was a medical center with nurses and doctors, and so you could go into the doctor as much as you needed, and that was part of your monthly fees. Health coverage lasted approximately four years as Leisure World started to go bankrupt. In addition, monthly dues began rising significantly to cover health care costs. And then in the 60s, Medicare came in. And as soon as that happened, everyone in here was, or most everyone was switching on to Medicare anyway. So the healthcare center became a separate company and people would use their Medicare to get the healthcare. From the outset, an array of amenities was included with the home purchase. 
you got your unit, you had access to all of the clubhouses, the pool. The golf course wasn't put in right away, but it was already planned, so you knew that it, as soon as it was built, you would have access to the golf course. You could use the rooms in the clubhouses, so if you were having a family birthday party, for no charge, you could book a room and bring your family here to do things. People who wanted to have clubs could have clubs and use rooms for no charge. The library wasn't built here initially. Unique A-frame architecture from that time period still exists in Leisure World today. Clubhouse 1 and 2, as well as the Holy Family Catholic Church, are examples of this days gone by design and were original structures in the community. That's the same thing with the deco blocks that are outside our units. That's a mid-century design feature. Another key building was also an A-frame, but was renovated for a very good reason. So the healthcare center was an A-frame, and it was there until 1995 when we had a flood and the building was so damaged by the flood they had to tear it down, they had to stop using it. Clubhouse 3, a non-A-frame, was also an original clubhouse, built and opened at the inception. In the early 1960s, some 2,700 golden rain trees were imported from New Orleans and planted here throughout Leisure World, resulting in the name, the Golden Rain Foundation. As Leisure World settled in, the community grew, yet controversy took place. In 1964, residents were not satisfied with management in the Golden Rain Foundation. They called themselves the Senior Citizens Protective League. At their peak, they probably had over 2,500 members, which were all people inside the complex. When they started thinking that Cortese was mismanaging the building, that the boards that were managing it were um, favoring Cortese and business deals and contracts, so they formed their own group and they asked um, William Williams if he would legally represent them if they wanted to get, basically get Cortese's company off the premises. In this dated video, Attorney Williams explains how the situation unfolded. One of the very nasty things that occurred to one of the people who was in this group was that he was on the telephone to me at home one evening and he said he heard something funny on his phone. He said, I'll call you later. He went to a pay phone, called me back on a pay phone. And he said, I think my phone's bugged. I said, oh, I can't believe that. And he said, I think it is. I said, okay, you go back and call me on the phone. In the meantime, I'll call the police department at Seal Beach and we'll tell them we think this is happening. So he went home. In the meantime, I called the police department. They came out here. And so he and I talked nonsensically for about a half hour and the police drove around and around and found a panel truck two, two blocks away from his house with two men operating a phone bugging system. They were arrested and taken to court. It got so bad though, people were putting little signs over at a grocery store, please take over the payments on my apartment, I'll give it to you free. This, this was the way it was. Leisure World did recover from the incident and through it all, Attorney Williams had high regard for Ross Cortese and his efforts. When Mr. Cortese uh, built this project, they had a grand plan, and he truly was a man of vision. It doesn't matter what later happened or what the feelings were of the people concerning him. The FHA and he had gotten together concerning the financing of this, and FHA really was sold on Mr. Cortese. By the mid-1960s, city limits now included the wall city of Rossmore, Leisure World, and the city of Seal Beach. Just south of Leisure World, the North American Aviation Company, now Boeing, was awarded and built the second stage of the Saturn II rocket in the now demolished factory. Here the rocket is transported down Seal Beach Boulevard. The rocket logo was proudly imprinted on police and fire trucks at that time. 
Also, the 405 freeway was open from Seal Beach to the San Fernando Valley. In fact, the name Seal Beach Boulevard was previously named Bay Boulevard, but was changed in the late 1960s. The Leisure World Historical Society was founded in 1993 by former history professors Ken and Claire Walker and is a 501c3 educational nonprofit. The office houses various artifacts from yesteryear. So what got you involved in working here at the Historical Society? They needed somebody to kind of help maintain it. You know, I, it's just the interest that I didn't want it to go by the wayside. This is a cape that was worn by Dorothy Brandeis uh, from the Leisure World Medical Center, and this was her nurse's cape. And um, so we're really happy to have this. This is a jacket that was donated. We're not sure exactly. Uh, it, it, I believe it was some sort of maybe military group, uh, but it, the man who donated it was Gordon Lundgren, and we kept that in his pocket here. And um, anyway, we've kept it and kind of kept it with this uh, Leisure World Barrack 2860, which is our uh, memorial to the World War I veterans. We had our own liquor store, and I, my understanding is that they actually delivered inside Leisure World. And so they have their own label. If you can see that it's exclusively made for Leisure World liquors. I was already helping, um, yeah, get things a little more modern mm -hmm. because no one had thought about digitizing things, and the materials in here were aging. You, were, you had bug problems because there was a lot of paper we know that at least once a lot of the newspapers were water damaged. So I started volunteering and trying to maybe get it a little more digital, but also organize it so we knew what was in here. Are all the artifacts for Leisure World here? Because this does look like a, a, a relatively small office. Even though this is a decent room, there have been times water has gotten in here. Um, it's not climate controlled, so it can get very cold and very hot. And so we realized the paper was aging a lot faster. So we reached out to UCI and said, would you be interested? And they were very interested. The Langston Library on the campus of UC Irvine now houses some 200 boxes of Leisure World memorabilia. What other place but Leisure World holds the title as, you know, the first um, retirement community, um, master plan retirement community um, in the United States. So it was a no-brainer for us. It complements um, the collections we have already, but it is so um, very grounded in Orange County history. It's really interesting to be able to see how everyday life has changed for the senior community from one decade to another. We have the ability to keep things under certain temperature controlled environments and to be able to organize the collections in a certain manner. Archives are open to the public Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You don't have to make an appointment to come in. You can just come in and tell us what you um, want to see and then somebody who is at our reference desk can help you or you can send um, myself or our main page an email and say, you know, this is what I have in mind. What do you have? And we can help guide you through the process of looking up that information. Now we have stuff from, you know, the 60s, from when Leisure World started to the present, but I always want that to be the present. So 20 years from now, we still want new members of the, of the Leisure World community to send us their material so we can continue to build that legacy. Over 50 years in the making, the first of its kind in the nation, and through it all, Leisure World prides itself as a diverse retirement community with something for everyone.